Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the 19th Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells 2013. We invite you to have a seat, to have a free drink on the house. And enjoy with us the next presentation dealing with the team with the topic Achieving PEM Electrolyzer Scale Using Flexible Ceramic Membranes by Ceram Sorry, Serum Hyde by the board member Dr. Tarek Nasser. Give him a big hand, please. Thank you. Okay, let's see first if I can work this. Um, okay, so um, this is basically, I gave a talk a bit earlier today in the public forum about uh, how we want to use our te existing technology to scale up to megawatt scale in terms of electrolyzers. Uh, during that talk we were focused mainly on the actual uh, on the actual structure of the, uh, on the actual modular structure designs that we are making. I'm going to talk a bit about these towards the end. Here I'm going to start by concentrating on the core of the technology of Ceramid, which is our own in-house proprietary membranes, PEM membranes. So I'm going to go through basically like first a quick overview of the actual technology itself. Then I'm going to go through the how it is applied specifically in technology because this is a membrane which is used for technology purposes. And then I'm going to go through the actual scaling developments on it. First of all, this, I don't know if this actually points, but as you see, this is the actual membrane that we have. So. It's a ceramic, but as you see from the picture itself, it's completely flexible. It feels like essentially a paper. Uh, these exist in A4, A3 sizes, so uh, they exist in multiple sizes. We've, from the very small to the A3 size, potentially bigger in the future. Now, this membrane, what you see as white there, that's the actual membrane. The black on it is the catalyst that is deposited directly on the membrane. So, our systems are the, the actual membranes that we produce is particularly adapted to catalyst deposition on it. It is completely dimensionally stable it, as compared, for instance, to many nafion-like membranes and perfluorofluorosulfonated membranes, which are a bit more difficult because they've got hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, behavior. In this membrane, because the majority of the conduction takes place by the 95% ceramic content, it is very dimensionally stable. When you try to coat it, it remains exactly as it is. It just gets a bit inflated and that's it. Now, these are because we wanted to show people basically what it is. This is scanning electron microscopy pictures of the actual membrane itself, multiple cross sections of it. We're putting these there to basically show that this is not, I mean, this is not a porous membrane. This is actually an ion exchange membrane that conducts ions. This is nothing is going through porosities here. This is not a diaphragm. This is a bona fide membrane. For those of you who passed by our booth, I can show you a small sample of it, so you see what it is like. So, as you see, it's uh, everywhere, more than enough in terms of density on it. Now, what kind of characteristics does it have? So, we're going to cover a bit of the main characteristics of the uh, serapem membrane. First of all, in terms of actual conductions, this works as an anion and a cation membrane. It works for both. Of course, in the case of hydrogen electrolysis, we're using it as a cation membrane. So, as a H plus membrane, in other words, a PEM, a proton exchange membrane. But we've got further other applications for it where we are using it also as an anion membrane. The exact same formulation with a bit of tweaks to it. Now, uh, the, for instance, many of the ions that we know it conducts would contain, uh, would be sodium and uh, chlorine, etc., as well as, the, of course, hydronium and hydrogen. The conductivity is, uh, as you see, it's 2 times 10 to the minus 1 Siemens, so 0 0.2 Siemens per centimeter. That's compared to Nafion, which typically is around 8 times 10 to the minus 2, that's like 2 to 3 times more, basically. And this kind of conductivity is achieved at room temperature, not at 70 or 80 degrees like Nafion. It increases a bit with, uh, with temperature, though not radically, but already at room temperature it's considerably higher than what you see with Nafion, actually. Then, um, uh, it's essentially, this is actually an important point for those of you familiar with other PEM uh, electrolyzers. One of the problems that you actually notice with PEM electrolyzers is that they need fairly high purity, if not ultra high purity, water with them. Why? Because in all 
sulfonated membranes. The, sulfonate, the sulfonated groups in there, which actually do the conduction, are quite vulnerable to bivalent ions. So when they get calcium, magnesium, anything which has two pluses in it, it binds together the actual conduction sites, and then it effectively deactivates the membrane. In our case, the conduction mechanism is completely different. There's no sulfonated groups. There's none of that. The, I mean, it's a, obviously it's a proprietary kind of mechanism, so I can't discuss it too much, but uh, it is completely impervious to, uh, to calcium or magnesium or any bivalent atom uh, ion that has in it. So this is why we basically take tap water, we run it through essentially a very basic water softener. We're not talking about PPB in terms of the water, we're talking about PPM. And not even the low PPMs, but the high PPMs in terms of the actual uh, purity that's needed. Still works extremely well. Um, now, what else? It's again, in terms of like what it's designed to work, it works with basically pH of any pH from 0 to 14. They've all been tested, nothing assaults the membrane. It's, I mean, all of these properties, there's nothing miraculous really in them. It's, it's about the fact that this is a ceramic, a very stable three dimensional structure which is extremely stable against all sorts of uh, chemical attacks on it. Now, um, the design of the actual cells, of course, these are zero gap cells complete zero gap. It's one of, I don't know exactly the th what, how thin all the other uh, cells that have been shown in this exhibit are, but we've got possibly the thinnest of them, like very compact technology, uh, which is one of the reasons why it actually achieves these kinds of uh, uh, performances on it. Um, the membrane thickness in term for us, this is where you see the difference actually. For us, typically it's about 350 microns. We can achieve 200, but most of the Type prototypes that we've rolled out are 350 microns for the membrane. And yet, even though it's like basically twice the thickness of Nafion, it overperforms Nafion because of the high conductivity that it has. Uh, well, we spoke about the ion selectivity, the catalyst. Okay, so this gives you a bit of an idea of polarization curves. The, these are, this is not, these are not lab results. These are not single cell, tiny cell uh, results, anything like that. These are actual results from 50 kilowatt stacks. And we are achieving now extremely similar results with a 150 kilowatt system. So these are the actual results of a real prototype. So it goes up basically at 2.1, we achieve about, uh, about 1.5, 1 1.6 amperes per square centimeter. The point where we typically operate it is around here, around 0 0.9, 0 0.8, so about 1.95 volts. That's the, the operating point for it, but it can operate through the entire scale in there. And this, yeah, this is the polarization curve at 60 degrees. At room temperature, of course, the polarization curve is a bit less, but not significantly less. So there is a bit of like, it gets a bit better with temperature, but not as much as with Nafion. It, it, in other words, it already starts very well. Now, the electrolyzer technology. This is just to give you an idea. Basic, I mean, probably most of you have seen these things before. These are standard stacks. We've, we've got certain proprietary knowledge in the way that we make the stack itself, but uh, it's, uh, it's essentially an MEA, the membrane coated with the actual catalyst, and then we've got the current collectors, the, uh, the gas diffusion layers, the, the whole works basically on it. And this is giving you an idea basically of like this, this I think would be a favorite. This is the 50 kilowatt stack, for instance. It's, uh, it, I mean, with my hands, it would be basically maybe this thick. It's kind of heavy, but uh, this is it. It's quite compact as a system. Now, some experiences that we've had. So we, when we first began to uh, uh, making the, using these membranes to make uh, electrolyzers, we started, of course, with a very small system, like an 0.5 kilowatt system. Then we did in 2010 the, two, uh, the 5 kilowatt. Then we actually made the production line for the membrane. So now the membrane is not produced. Uh, there's still obviously, it's, uh, let's say it's semi-automated right now. We, we are capable of producing a thousand, couple of thousand square meters a year fairly easily, which can be extended simply by extending the equipment. So uh, it's a fairly well automated system for the production for it. In 2011, we made a 50, uh, 50 kilowatt. Then we got, in 2012, all the SIL and ATEX, etc., all sorts of certifications for the electrolyzers, specifically for deployment and power to gas applications. In 2013, specifically in September 2013, we would be delivering a 150 kilowatt system to RWE for a project, uh, power to gas project, which is taking place in Ibn Buren. Um, 
well this is again we're showing more or less like the stack efficiency this is the polarization curve again so this is the actual container for the 150 kilowatt this is a bit like how this looks on the inside this would be a 50 kilowatt stack so you see it's really fairly compact it's not that big it's a uh, it is literally something you can kind of open your arms and have it between your arms and it uh, this is where we're assembling it. We make everything ourselves. These are the clean rooms where we produce the actual membranes and the, uh, we coat with the catalyst. Uh, this is a system that we installed at uh, ArcelorMittal, the steel company. This is the 50 kilowatt system that I just mentioned before. It was installed there for obviously like doing field testing, checking what can go wrong and obviously many things do go wrong and then you correct them and then you get it all uh, sorted out. So it's been there for I think about a year. Two years, two years, being corrected. Now, the how does this respond? Because we're talking about power to gas, we're talking about renewable energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, we first question that comes to mind is like, what is the response time for these things? So, here you see basically this is the time axis. This is the voltage, the uh, so tension, voltage, current, current, and. Uh, we vary the current, the uh, we vary the voltage or the current very fast, and we try to see how the other can, uh, follows with it. And as you see, the response time is virtually instantaneous. You can't even see the blue curve; it's completely covered by the green one. The uh, the res uh, this the response time is really extremely fast, which is to be expected. This is a PEM technology. I mean, that's not specifically novel in that sense, but uh, to show that this actually does work in that way. Now, some of the ongoing developments. This is where we're presenting also another, the let's say, the second pillar of our scale-up strategy on this. So the first pillar is the membrane itself, which enables us to gain this performance and to be able to uh, produce it in, in mass scale, etc. And this is in terms of the actual design of the system. Uh, the idea is we want to go now f to make basically what we call these power, uh, power stack modules and then the power stack trains from one megawatt to five megawatts. Um, why do we want to do that? Obviously for the applications, for the power to gas applications and for all the applications that seem to be requiring the megawatt scale. And also because it allows us to transfer a lot of the actual installation, even assembly of the BOP to engineering companies, standardize the systems. That way we don't need to make like a... You, ha you have clients like one client comes in like, I want 152 and a half kilowatts. No, the, this has to be fairly standardized to reach the kind of cost targets that you have. Uh, and it simplifies the operation and maintenance. Now, I'll show you a bit like the basic concept for this because this kind of like explains how this is working. The idea is to make multiple power stack modules. So, this module, this is, it's a bookshelf, okay? And you're putting on it the books. These are the stacks. They get plugged in exactly like Lego pick, uh, pieces. You have already the outlets for them, the uh, basically the fluid outlets, the, uh, the the and the gas outlets and the electricity, etc. Everything is contained in the common uh, in the common uh, trunk which you have in there. And then you plug them in, and then you can each of these each of these modules would be a 250 uh, each of these stacks. Sorry, would be a 250 kilowatts. So the module would be a one megawatt, and then you put them together into a train multiple you want to add more you add more that's it when you want to do maintenance here you've got for instance five megawatts so that's five by four that's 20 stacks you're not going to have all 20 stacks that fail on you in the same time you have one that falls what you do is you come you unclick this you take it out you put a new one and you take the old one and you fix it zero interruption for the client complete reliability that's the whole concept the idea is we want to make this easy for engineering companies we want to make this easy for operation and maintenance, highly reliable for the client. They need to have zero time. The engineering company does not need to know what's happening inside. All they need to know is like, I take out one, I click in one, and that's it. And the rest, they take care of it there. No interruptions, reliability. Now, uh, this is another one of the, this kind of like another 3D design of the, uh, the, uh, the power stack train. So multiple of them. And, well, actually, that's it. I think I've wrapped up fairly quickly. So, uh, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Dr. Nasser, for this interesting and informative presentation. So, is here anybody who has a question right now?
not yet. So where's your booth here at the group exhibit? It's, so uh, oh, I'm so bad with numbers. Uh, it has to be D61. Okay, so yeah. if someone um, has a question coming later in his yeah. mind, so uh, you, around. Yeah. you're here until tomorrow. I well, think I'm here so. until tomorrow. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. So we continue our program after a short break with a presentation from the company Manfield. Please stay, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee or some fruit juice or water or coming back later in a few minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>